Good day, gardening time. We know summertime in the south can be scorching hot one day and more comfortable like it is today. So how do the up and down, the heat and the drought conditions affect our gardens and lawns? Bethany O'Rear joins us now to talk about that. Hey, Bethany, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you today? Good. What a nice day today. It is nice. Um, it's short-lived, but we're going to enjoy it today. <laughs> Yes, it is short-lived. All right, so what are we looking at here when it comes to the uh, heat and the drought when it comes to our gardens and lawns? So when we're looking at drought, um, our established plants will probably be fine. Um, things that we want to look out for, though, even if they're established, some of our plants are more sensitive to drought, like Japanese maples. Um, so if we're not getting regular rain, you're going to want to provide um, a supplemental irrigation. Um, otherwise, stress in that plant during the summer can cause issues into the fall and winter of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, even if we are providing water, this intense heat can do some damage as well. Um, and we are, we've been seeing some hot spots in turf grass. Mm. So um, even though they're irrigating, it's just the intense heat. Thankfully, turf grass is pretty tough uh, once it's established. So it should green back up. Um, so it's not really a disease issue. Uh, we're just seeing problems caused by the intense drought and heat. Another thing, uh, when we're looking at vegetables, the heat can cause a decrease in blooms. And when we don't have any blooms, we're not going to have any vegetables, right? So um, that can be a problem. Um, and especially related to nighttime temperatures, tomatoes are susceptible, as well as green beans and some other things. So um, just something to think about. Um, not everything, uh, plant problems this time of year are going to be disease related. It mm -hmm. could just be due to the intense heat, due to the lack of water. Uh, but we're happy to answer those questions. So if you do have some plants that you're not sure what's going on, wanting to know if you, there's anything you can do to help them, we'll be happy to uh, help you come up with a solution for that. Are there just some things that no matter what you do, you may be doing everything that you tell us to, you just can't prevent sometimes? Is just gonna, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So there's just not a lot you can do. In fact, I was in the vegetable garden about a week ago. Um, the green beans, the pole bean blooms were just falling to the ground because the temperatures are just too hot. Hmm. Getting plenty of water because we're drip irrigating, uh, but you couldn't, the blooms weren't staying on because of the temperature. There's just nothing you can do about that. What so. about, what about evergreens that, you know, will be beautifully green and then they'll have these brown spots on them. Is that heat related? Or is that drought? Sometimes that can be disease. A lot of times that can be drought. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Conifers are real susceptible to drought. The problem is you don't see the symptoms until the damage has already been mm -hmm. done. So if you've got um, some evergreens, conifer type plants, needled leaf plants, Make sure you provide some supplemental water if we're not getting regular rainfall, uh, because once again, you won't see the damage until probably next spring, and then it's going to be too late. Once they start to the decline, there's no reversing it. All right, Bethany O'Rear, thank you so much. You're welcome. See All right. you soon. All right, now let's go back to the kitchen. Hey, Trace Barnett here, the Bitter Socialite, and we're not exactly cooking something, but this is something everybody needs to know. Yeah, this, I'm going to show you the easiest ways to freeze and can up summer vegetables. We're going to take all the worry away. All right, y'all want to stick with us now. 